I got up around midnight or 12.30 when I heard these sounds. Okay. It was uh, Sasquatch. Yep. It would be nice to knock out one of these dams today. Right. What do you think, Colonel? Was it as bad as you thought? Worse. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell the old Colonel is getting worn out. Look at him. He won't even stick around to be on camera. Supposedly, he didn't sleep a wink, even though I heard him snoring half the night. The Colonel didn't get up till 8 because he slept like a princess over there in that new REI tent. We'll get a nice warm fire going because my toes been cold all day. Colonel, I haven't been this excited about a campsite in years. And we'll be back on the Osceola River bright and early tomorrow morning. We're not getting out here at 9 30, 7 30. And just like that, we are off on morning four of our Off Sable River through Paddle. And as you can see all around me, there's a thick blanket of fog surrounding us and we have no idea which way to go. We think it's straight across away from our campsite to the portage to leave Alcona Pond, or as Colonel calls it, Altoona. Pond. Here comes the Colonel getting ready to enter back into the river. We just left Alcona Dam Pond up there. Got some heavy construction going on over here. I'm ready to get away from this. Back into some peace and quiet. Alrighty, Colonel, back on the river. River on this side. Huh? River on this side. Think so? Yeah. Colonel says it's warmer. Closer to 60 degrees. That's warm, that's warm enough for a rope swing. Uh, those don't exist in this part of the country. <laughs> this is beautiful and eerie at the same time. Wow. I'm glad we got to experience the fog, but I am ready for some sunshine. I started drifting left, I didn't couldn't stop it. The fog has finally lifted. It's clearing up. It's warming up. Today is shaping up to be a great day. Well, I thought I'd just give you a little update on what's going on. We're kind of in a slow section right now. Probably still 2.5, but we're ready for some more fast water. We've had some decent water. It is 10 o'clock and believe it or not, we're exactly one third of the way through, Colonel, for today's mileage. So we're about at eight miles for today. The sun has come out, but it's still partly cloudy, but it feels much better. I just can't get over how calm and peaceful it is out here and tranquil and relaxing. But after a while, you start craving something different. I'm actually almost ready to get to the next pond. Uh, Loud Dam, is that the next one? Even though it's gonna suck going through that flat water, you know, just to see something different, some vacation homes and campsites and um, just a different section of the river. Because after you do this for so long, it does get monotonous a little bit. A lot of pretty pine trees through here. Just wish there was a little more sun to go along with them. All right, I think we have a bald eagle sighting. I'm not sure. It's so darn cloudy, it's just hard to see anything clearly. There he is. What is that? I think it's a bald eagle. Should we try to get him to fly? 
I think he's a yearling. He doesn't look completely white on the head. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you scared me more than the eagle. <laughs> Nothing rattles an eagle. <laughs> Man. Let's see if I can hold this steady while I'm zoomed in. He just looks like a dark shadow. I got his beak there a little bit. Some beautiful horses. Some thirsty horses. My daughter loves horses. She's going to love this. Man, that's pretty. We have officially arrived at Loud Dam Pond. I don't think I could go much slower if I paddled this thing sideways. <laughs> we are in the middle of Loud Dam Pond, and I'm about to get loud because this is horrific. We gotta go up to that point, make a right turn, and another half mile to the dam. Here it is, folks. The portage out of Loud Dam Pond. I'm telling you what, I didn't think we'd ever get off this thing. The bad news is, as soon as we get out of Loud Dam Pond right here, we go down the hill into Five Channels Dam Pond. It's just Dam Pond after Dam Pond. But the good news is, we only have seven miles left to tonight's campsite that we intend on staying at. It's in Cook Dam Pond where I stayed at, oh, about five years ago with my two brothers and my sons and his son for our Lumberman's Monument man trip where we went sand dune jumping and primitive camping for four days. So that is our destination, and we're only seven miles away. I'm looking forward to it. But right now, getting off of this loud damn pond, having some lunch, and heading into five channels. Kurt, how's it feel to be on dry land, buddy? Hee-haw! So the Colonel's having some bumblebee tuna in seconds. Chicken salad, tuna salad, and it comes with a spoon that you open up, click it together. I there broke you it go. Open. I broke it, taking it you out. You broke the tip of the spoon off, but at least you still have a spoon to get out your tuna salad. Well, that's impressive. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I am having buffalo chicken and pepper jack cheese wrap. How's the chicken salad taste? Tuna salad. Oh, tuna salad. Is it pretty good? Yeah, it is. Not like mom makes. Yeah, I bet. It's hard to beat moms. You go down in front of yours? Yeah. Otherwise, it gets away from you. Oh, yeah. This is pretty steep. I can come up there and give you a hand if you want. Just making sure you don't get away. And we're off into Five Channels Dam Pond. We finally have some beautiful sunshine. It feels so good. Oh, Colonel, we waited four days for this. We got sunshine in a damn pond. Oh. <laughs> Man, I'm getting a suntan today. Yeah. In northern Michigan in September. We are here at the Five Channels Portage. We have a little floating dock here. 
and we just about had two disasters here. The colonel, he first of all he had a tough he had a tough time getting out, and when he got out, his oar was right here, and it fell down the crack between the concrete and this floating little dock we're standing on. Luckily, I was able to sneak my arm down in there and get the paddle. I have a skinny arm, so I was able to get it. Colonel, what were you thinking? Tell me what was going through your mind when you Man, lost your paddle. I was scared. I thought, <laughs> this is going to be rough with my arms the rest of the way. And what did you realize after this happened? You told me something. Now you know why. Why? I've seen other videos. I think Pete even carries an extra paddle. We always wondered why, but now we know. This must be why. <laughs> he an even though we have averted one disaster, we still have a problem. When I was pulling my kayak out of the water, it spilled my cooler into the water. Luckily it floated and I was able to get it. And my map, my laminated map went into the water. And when I went to scoop it up with my oar, it went, I'll show you where it went. It went under the dock. So this dock's hollow somewhat. And I reached my arm down there and I cannot feel the map. So the map is floating around inside this dock somewhere. So I'm pretty pissed off about that. What a stupid portage. Stupid portage. I wouldn't have said that. What? Pissed off. So I'm really ticked off about this. Losing my map. $15 map. Nice laminated map. It's not that we really need it, but it does have some helpful things on it. What do you think, Colonel? What's it look like up there? A lot of steps down. Oh boy. We got a doozy of a portage here. We got a bathroom. We got a bathroom. Boy, I don't know what we would have done if we wouldn't have found Colonel Zor. Colonel, what do you think we would have had to do? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, we'd have to call the Carlisle where we dropped this off at. Yeah. Or we could have broke my oar into two parts and rode one oar each, kind of like we did in the um, Restless Outdoors video. That's like milking a bull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very difficult. Very difficult indeed. I'll tell you what, though. I would have jumped into water to find Colonel Zor. Even though I didn't jump in the water to find our map, I would have for the ore because, because not that all was... Wear capes. Not what? Not all heroes wear capes. Not all heroes wear capes. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't enjoy putting my arms in tight places where spiders and crustaceans survive. Girdle? Oh man, I'll tell you, crust crustaceans are the spiders of the water. <laughs> yes. That's just a boat launch, isn't it? With a bathroom. Look at all these happy little trees. What else does he say? Uh, boy, I don't know. I just remember the happy little trees. <laughs> just smack the devil out of it. <laughs> you ever see him do that with his brush? Yeah. I can't remember. It's not smack. Beat the devil out. Beat the devil out. Oh, that's what it is. You know, even though we're getting tired of this flat water, I'm trying to appreciate the beauty that we're going through right now. I don't know what kind of grass this is on the left. I keep wanting to say saw grass. I know it's not what it is, but some kind of river grass, flat water grass. I think it's switchgrass. Switchgrass, maybe that's what it is. But we got our first uh, sand dune, bluff, whatever you want to call it. It's not a dune, it's a bluff. Just a big sandy hill we're going by on the right. And the sun shines out and just the fresh pine air that we've been smelling. Oh, it's just amazing. So I guess, you know, if you're looking for fast water and no paddling, this is probably not the river, but if you're looking for serenity, tranquility, peacefulness, solitude, quiet, all those great things that nature can provide, this is a great river for you. It's definitely not a wild, what's the word, what am I trying to say? If you have a heart condition or are pregnant, this is the river for you. <laughs> Colonel said if you have a heart condition or if you're pregnant, this is the river for you. <laughs> if you want boulders and white water, look elsewhere. <laughs> it's beautiful out now. It's like 76, I'm guessing. 88. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite 88 like the Colonel thinks, but it is nice. Mostly sunny now. And I can finally see our first big sandy bluff coming up. We're getting close to Lumberman's Monument, people. 
pure Michigan right here, folks. Pristine beauty. Guys, I am trying some fishing. I got my pole back here, and I got a rubber worm on it that you would maybe go bass fishing with. Um, I think there's striped bass out here. Um, geez, who knows? I, I know I'm not gonna catch a trout with this, but maybe I can catch a striped bass or a smallie or something, I don't know. But we're gonna keep moving and pulling this rubber worm, and we'll see if we catch anything. Wouldn't that be something to have fresh fish for dinner? Fresh sashimi. Holy moly, guys, check out the snake. Let's chase him. Man, I wonder what that is. Oh, guys! He's ready to strike! That thing, I'm telling you, that is a venomous snake. He started rising up and flaring his head out. What kind of snake is this, guys? He's got like a, on the sides of his head, he's got like these uh, fins that opened up. I don't know if you can see him very good or not. I'm probably too close. There, he's rising his head up. He's gonna get me. Oh! <laughs> we have finally arrived at Lumberman's Monument Sand Dune. Bluff, whatever you want to call it. This thing's a monster. I've been here two or three times previous and have some other videos about this sand dune. I'll put them up there in the cards right now. We have the whole place to ourselves today, obviously, but there's many, many boats here on Memorial Day and it was a happening place. I've even seen videos of slip and slides being built on the side of the hill there. And me and my brothers actually sprinted down that hill and raced from all the way to the top. Raced to the bottom, full blast into the water below. That was pretty fun. We have arrived at Sawmill Takeout. And this is the boat launch that I have been to several times with my brothers and sons for our man trips. We're gonna walk up here and check out all these primitive sites that are around this area, see what's available. We have restrooms up ahead, and I know that's what Colonel wants. That'd be nice. We have arrived at camp. It's 5.40 p.m. on Cook Dam Pond, and we have a beautiful site here. Nice, tall, hardwoods, nice clean for tents. Colonel's pretty happy with it, and I I'm going to do a time lapse of that beautiful sunset tonight. Look at that. It's perfect. There are three sites right here. And the next one over is slightly better, has a slightly better fire pit. However, the time lapse option was the kicker. So now we are going to get our tent set up, get a nice fire going, cook some ramen, some spam, some mountain house, you name it. All kinds of good food. Since tomorrow's our last day, we're going hog wild tonight and eating everything we got. There's the duplex all set up for the night. And plenty of time. It's only like six o'clock, so we got a couple hours to relax and enjoy the beautiful sunset. Take a bath out in the lake, have a nice fire, cook some dinner. Let's go check out Colonel's tent. Colonel's got his tent all set up for the night. And he's gonna enjoy a beautiful sunset right here, that's for sure. Nice location, Colonel. Thank you, Mr. Jason. It's a pretty nice sight. And the mosquitoes are out a little bit tonight, unfortunately. Not real bad, but definitely the worst I've seen in the last three days. Wow. That is a hot, bright sun tonight. I love it. Oh. Feels great. A little cold. 
Well, I think we're gonna call it a night. We enjoyed some food around the fire and a beautiful sunset over the Cook Dam. So we will see you guys in the morning for our final leg of our journey. I believe we have approximately 25 miles out to Lake Huron in Oscoda.